Welcome to Slow Home Studio. Too many people live in badly designed houses and we want to change that. Today is Wednesday, May 25th and we're going to be doing a little bit of a follow-up from our episode last week where we looked at the house by Super Cool Architects in Toronto, the Split House, and it had a very interesting uh, detail in the centre of the plan with the stairwell. It had skylights that were operable uh, which was a part of a, an environmental performance criteria to allow the hot air to vent out through the two-story space. So let's have a look at that and talk about these skylights in a little bit more detail. Here's the image from the Super Cool Project. And so above this, we've got skylights. And so the idea is that the warm air rises and goes and vents out through that skylight as well as bringing natural light in. This is the principle. This is not a section of that house, just to be clear, but it is a good illustrative section. You can see that actually we've got a basement, and so the idea is that the cool air that's close to the ground falls down into that lower level. It's not absolutely necessary that this happen. That you then bring it through, it cools down a little bit more. Then as it starts to warm up, as it goes th through the house, it rises up warm air rises to the underside of the roof and then out through the operable skylight. So it is interesting because this brought us to thinking about skylights and typically we think of skylights as being these fixed windows in the ceiling that provide light yeah. but it is possible to have one that is operable to allow the ventilation to occur. The issue is of course when you're in a two-story space how do you actually get them to open and a lot of companies including Velux make ones that are operable through an electrical connection and you can use a remote control. I even found out that it is possible to get a skylight that has a rain sensor so if you happen to be away from your house and you know traveling or at work or something and a big thunderstorm hits it will automatically close and uh, and prevent the water from getting into the house. So manual skylights are obviously less expensive in terms of operable uh, skylights because you don't need the electrical connection. However, you have to be able to reach them. So in the really high two-story space, it's important uh, to consider how you're going to open and close the skylight. So the other th important consideration, obviously, is installation. And we, I think everybody has had an experience, or at least knows somebody has had an experience with a leaky skylight. But They've come a long way over the last few years and there's a, a new technologies and a way in which these skylights are installed. And so you need to make sure that you have follow a reputable dealer with a reputable installer and to make sure that the water sealing is done. Really correctly. important, the new skylights, Velux is a good example. They come with flashing kits that are designed often to be retrofit into an existing roof or installed in new construction. The issue is, is that the skylight manufacturers have all of the components ready to make sure that it's a water proof seal, you have to make sure that the installer is certified, knows what he or she is doing, and does a proper job with installing them. So skylights are actually practically sustainable strategies in two ways. First of all, they bring natural light in. We can see a before and after shot of how much nicer it is to have that natural light here again. But they also, if you use an operable one, could be an effective way to enhance natural ventilation in your space and reduce air conditioning costs. See you tomorrow.